training the African child to have a repossessing mindset. How many of you here today remembers how it felt like to think like a child? If you do, raise up your hand. So this is exactly how it feels like. How many of you remember the moment you ask your parents questions and the next thing is they fail to give you the answers you wanted to hear? So what you do is you call your friends in the neighborhood, you become creative at that moment in time, and you build your own car, probably Dr. Osafu Kantankas car. So this is what you have. So I'll tell you a story, and that's the story of one of those boys called Makafui. Makafui, at the age of 10, started life so early. He always helped his mother make sales, so he sells bread, sugar, coconuts, and all those before getting back to school. Oftentimes, he gets to school very late. Makafui learned a lot from his mother, very persistent, critically thinking. There was a time Makafui went to the market to make sales, and he lost the money. So he got back home and decided to build a, a small box, and that box, he used that to save all the monies. And the mother asked, Makafui, how did you do it? And he said, to save money for my education, which I wanted to pursue, I would really want to do this money box. The mother was very happy. So the next course for Makafui is to pursue a career or study a course in university, electrical engineering, at the Accra Institute of Technology. It's about critical thinking. It's about how you perceive things, what resonates in your mind. This picture depicts exactly what is happening. You see three young girls sitting, interacting with each other. Their emotions could tell that they are thinking about solving a particular problem. And that is what Africans need right now. How do we reason? We tell stories to our little kids when they are young. As a child growing up, your mother tells you about the unanswered stories and you feel very proud about it. But there is something which we lost. How are we telling our stories now then? We tell our kids that they can do what they really can do. So they feel dejected and they don't know where to connect the dots. So we talk about culture. Culture is one aspect of our life that we can do our way with. But there are a lot of issues that need to be resolved. Issues of unemployment, issues of a lot, issues of unemployment, issues of what? Persecutions that people say stuff about you that you don't really know how to go about it. Issues of corruption that we need to find out to resolve. But if you don't train your African child to reason with and to know the right source to go addressing all those issues, how would you go to get it done? So how do we get started? I felt proud as an African when I read stories about young innovators, young Africans doing great things like that of Stephen Odoton. He built a young energy, uh, uh, energy inventor that was really great. I think we should really go after this young guy. I was really thrilled at his age. He did wonderful things like this. I also felt so proud again when I read about Kelvin Doe, a young Sierra Leonean inventor, built his own radio tape with a lot of scripts he picked on, or from the grass when moving out of, of the street. I think we can really do a lot more. We need a lot of problem solvers. We need a lot of innovators. We need a lot of younger kids to be trained to identify what really works with them. So the problem is not just about identifying the younger kids that are doing so well, as you can see. We need to know how to get started. So allow those kids to ask questions. Right now, when a child walks up to you and asks, mom, why is this thing done? You tell them that you're not supposed to ask this question because you don't need to know about it. But I believe asking questions will allow them to give the right answers to the doubts that they have. That will connect the doctor to allowing them to know their identity. We are all Africans, but how often do we wear our African clothes? How often do we eat those dishes we really want to eat? How often do we train people based on values that they need to know about? Help that African child know his or her identity. The next is to think about coaching and mentoring them. There are a lot of people who want to be engineers, innovators, they want to start something, but they lack mentorship. If you want that child to go beyond and soar higher to be that great person he or she wants to be, get to coach that child. They need that coaching and mentoring. 
I believe most of you will walk out of this building and start coaching that African child to pursue their dream. Yes, we talk about leadership. I mean, leadership it is, is a list thing talked about in Africa right now because of the corruption, because of how things are going on. We create fear and panic in that child so he doesn't want to even go ahead to take on any leadership position right from primary school. So what I'm telling you is train that African child to take on the leadership training that he or she needs, especially transformational leadership. That will go a long way to help them pursue their dreams with focus and passion. So I would like to leave this with you. When you walk out of this building, we as Africans must dare the younger generation to pursue their dreams with focus and passion. That way, it will help them to think critically about the decisions they make. Akbar, thank you.